Next up for many producers, it's time to transition to the next growing season for corn and soybeans. And with that, farmers are encouraged to start formulating a plan to terminate the cover crops that were planted last fall. Best management practices will vary based on the fall planting date, spring growth conditions, and the goals established by the farmer or landowner. UNL Weed Management Extension Educator Chris Proctor joined me to discuss it. When I think cover crops, uh, maybe it's just because I spend time thinking about it, you start to think that uh, a lot of folks are doing it. And I think it's increased quite a bit. You know, I think the interest has certainly increased over time, but I'd say we're still probably under 10% as a state in terms of cover crop adoption. So it's still relatively low when you compare it to a practice that's been around uh, like no-till, you know, where we're probably closer to 40% for our state. So got a little ways to go, I suppose. And people have lots of questions regarding the timing of terminating cover crops. So, you know, that can depend on the type of objective that the farmer wants to get from those cover crops. That'll even yeah. depend on where you're at in the state when it comes to the timing. So what are some things that producers need to consider when it comes time to terminate those cover crops? Yeah, the termination is, it's, it's tricky in that, like you say, there's a, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, you know, when I, th when I think termination, uh, the crop you're growing, I think, has a big influence on that. So corn versus soybean are, are the ones that are most commonly grown in our state. And so thinking about those crops uh, can have a big influence. So corn just doesn't tolerate uh, a cover crop uh, overlapping with it uh, at planting time as much as soybean does. So we talk about planting green. Uh, soybean tends to tolerate planting green a little bit more than, than corn. And so usually you want to be on the cautious side with corn and terminate a little bit earlier. Uh, uh, but then some of your some of your goals. Uh, so not just when you overlap with with the cover crop in your in your crop, but uh, when do you when do you plant that next crop? You know, do you want to do you want to maximize your planting date of, of your uh, of your corn crop or your soybean crop and get that in is, is you know the last part of April and just really push it. Uh, usually you won't have as much cover crop biomass, and so uh, when I when I think about it, biomass drives a lot of the benefits we see in cover crops. So the longer we wait, the more biomass we get. And so there's a timing thing to it. Uh, you know, we did a study uh, a couple of years ago and we looked at um, cover crop termination timing. And we went from early May to mid-May and we doubled our biomass in two weeks that time of year. And so you can really gain a lot uh, that time of year. And so those are some of the things that, that I think are helpful to think about. And you said a little bit earlier when you're going to be planting corn, when you say a little bit earlier, I've read 10 to 14 days. Is that about right? Yeah, I think if you want to be safe, I think two weeks is a pretty safe uh, uh, timing to use. I know there's people maybe that use cover crops more often. They've kind of figured it out for their system. They might push it a little bit and get closer to a week or a couple, you know, three, four days. But, but two weeks is a pretty safe bet. All right, so say we've got those herbicides, they're on there, but maybe for some reason you didn't get all of it. That can really impact yields if you don't terminate everything, right? Yeah, no, it can, it can have some uh, negative effects because you, you have that green cover crop that just continues in into your, your uh, cash crop and it starts to uh, perform more like a weed in that case than it does a cover crop. Uh, there was a handful of years ago, uh, uh, it was, um, uh, wheat stem maggot had actually migrated from cover crop into corn. A lot of that was due to this extended uh, uh, timing after termination where the cover crop remained green and, and the corn started to emerge and so we had some of those pests uh, actually move into the corn crop in that instance. And so depending on the year and the, and the environment, sometimes those types of things will happen. Mm -hmm.